Thanks a lot for coming in. Good morning. Happy to be here. Something about this community appeals to you? This is a wonderful place to live. <laughs> for Kelowna Now, this is Kent Molgat. And we're joined by Aaron Sutherland, the Vice President of the Insurance Bureau of Canada, BC Division. Thanks for coming in. Thanks so much for having me today. And you're here to say that uh, we need to take a good look at ICBC. You, you don't like the status quo with ICBC and insurance rates averaging, what, over $1,600 a year? Yeah, I don't think any British Columbians like the status quo on auto insurance uh, in this province. Uh, we pay more for auto insurance than anyone else in the country. Uh, and equally concerning, uh, ICBC is costing taxpayers uh, close to a billion dollars again this year. Uh, that should be alarming to everyone and, and really begging the question, okay, we need to see major changes, uh, but more importantly, we need to start seeing things that are going to improve the affordability of auto insurance going forward. Okay, just to back up, not only are we paying over $1,600 a year for our auto insurance, but even still, we will rack up a billion dollars in losses anyway that we've got to pay for in our taxes somewhere else. Yeah, it's, it's all coming out of the public purse uh, on that side of things. And that's, you know, I think ICBC's projection is $890 million that they're going to lose this year. That's $890 million taken away from healthcare, education, other important investments uh, that frankly doesn't have to be that way. You look across Canada, most other provinces, it's the private sector delivering auto insurance, uh, delivering it more affordably. Uh, delivering it with much higher satisfaction and so again if you look at the price you're paying uh, the satisfaction you have and the claims you're receiving it's the private sector that has proven to be a much more effective steward of auto insurance okay let, let's come back to different provinces and compare them in a minute but first you're saying the solution is to allow private companies to step in and compete with ICBC so I would suggest two things. One, we're going to see some important changes to our legal system uh, later this year on April 1st, the bringing in of a, a limit on payments for minor injuries. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. That mirrors what we have in other provinces. Uh, but one big thing that's different here in BC than elsewhere is the ability to shop around to find the best product at the best price, to bring that competitive advantage or competitive incentive to ICBC to make sure that they are operating as efficiently as they can be and delivering the best price for our right. dollar. Um, that's what we don't have and that's the solution that ultimately is going to be needed if we want to improve the affordability over the long term. Okay, you, you mentioned these reforms that are taking place. Uh, the NDP government says that they are going to uh, limit payouts on minor injury, pain and suffering? Yeah, so things like sprains, strains, whiplash, right. cuts and bruises, they're, you know, the definition of what exactly that is, that's still going to have to be tested uh, in the legal community, but certainly that is, in principle, aligns with the rest of right. this country. And also empowering um, resolution tribunals to handle some of the smaller cases. So we're not yeah. wasting as much money in court when we don't need to be there. Yeah, now that's unique, so we're going to have to see how that unfolds. But these are, these are really difficult changes, and I do think the government deserves right. some kudos for, for bringing them forward. Okay, so why not give that a chance before you say open it up to competition? Because I think what that really means, that's really code for getting rid of ICBC. Because if you do that, let's face it, they're not going to be here in a few years, or if they are, we're not going to recognize them. Yeah, so it uh, doesn't necessarily mean we have to get rid of ICBC, but, but I'll come back to that. Um, you know, why don't we just let these changes flow through and see what happens? Right. It's pretty clear the scale of the problem here in this province goes far beyond the current solution. Uh, ICBC in its own financial projections is still anticipating continued rate increases, uh, more in rate increases than they're expecting to save because of these legal reforms. Uh, so we're not going to see improvement in the affordability of auto insurance in this province uh, anytime soon. That, that's nothing that's being called for. And so if we want to start addressing the price, if we want to start bending that cost curve down, bending the price down uh, that consumers are paying, it's pretty clear we have to start looking outside ICBC for those solutions and let other companies get, use the expertise they've gained, the efficiencies, the innovations they have from places like Alberta, Ontario, Quebec, Atlantic, Canada. Uh, bring those to BC and see if they can provi provide auto insurance more affordably than, than ICBC can. Okay, it seems like over time and geography, we're not always seeing the government-operated insurance being the most expensive. I mean, BC used to have... We, we had ICBC in place since the 70s. We had lower insurance costs than they had in Ontario several years ago. Uh, so there you had private insurance. It wasn't performing better than, than ours. So isn't it just how we let it 
being yeah. operated. So it, it's certainly different systems are going to lead to different cost pressures, and you're going to see some changes over time. Uh, you know, you, see, you mentioned the 70s, and I always go back to, okay, so ICBC was created in 1973. Right. Uh, four years later, government had to bail them out uh, to the tune of $180 million, which in today's dollars is just under a billion dollars at the time. So right when they were created, they had to initially bail them out almost immediately because right. they weren't performing. Uh, and we're seeing that again today. And so, you know, yeah, the price changes a little bit. We have typically had among the, if not the most expensive, among the most expensive in the right. country. Uh, we now have the most expensive in the country by a, by a long shot. Uh, and again, more concerning is that we're not just paying more, uh, we're getting about the same, but it's costing taxpayers more and more each year as well. And, and that's just yet another reason that, you know, you've got this risk of owning ICBC and taxpayers paying the burden because of that. When the private sector doesn't perform very badly, it's just shareholders that, that get hurt there, not the actual taxpayer. And so this is a risk that probably lies more appropriately in the private sector rather than uh, all of us British Columbians making up the bill. Okay, I, I was looking at a list of the uh, rates people are paying, and the least expensive was Quebec. Yeah. And this is some centrally run uh, insurer there, and it's really low. So Quebec has a bit of a hybrid system. Everything's a little bit different in Quebec. Um, and so it's actually private insurers that insure your vehicle there. Right. Uh, and we don't typically compare Quebec to BC or Saskatchewan and Manitoba to BC because those are no-fault jurisdictions. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a no-fault system. So you can't sue for pain and suffering. And so that right. makes it for a little bit of an unfair comparison because, again, that's where we say the legal system is going to cost ICBC. An unfair comparison more. maybe, but shouldn't, I mean, if what we're paying is the issue, uh, could we look towards mimicking that? You, you, yeah. certainly, you certainly could, and if we're going to look at that, uh, Quebec, no fault, has the cheapest auto insurance in the country, and it's the private sector that insures the vehicles there. So, you know, if we're looking for best practices across Canada, across North America, frankly, right across the world, it's pretty clear that the private sector, that competitive incentive that forces companies to deliver the best product at the best price, is what works. Okay, I, I uh, clarify this for me. I was looking at it, and it, there's a central society that that operates the insurer, but it's private on the car. Can you break that down for yeah, me? Yeah, so it's um, basically if, if you're injured, you, you get your... Um, it, it's so different in Quebec, it, it might be a little bit complex to, to explain, but if you're injured, you, you're dealt with through the health system, and you, you pay for that through your, your driver's license. Uh, but then the actual insurance for your vehicle, property damage, things like that, that is all done through the private sector you get to choose uh, whoever's giving you the best product at the best price. Okay, so uh, you would call that a hybrid between the two? Yeah, hi somewhat. Um, but it, again, it's a no-fault system, and it's really difficult to compare no-fault where you cannot sue uh, to a tort system like BC, right. Alberta, Ontario. But um, it, it does look somewhat attractive when you look at the expenses that, that we uh, incur with this whole thing. So much of it comes from uh, paying for court costs and settlements. Yeah, it, it's all a balance. Uh, unfortunately, that balance is, is very out of whack here in BC. Uh, again, we're going to see some important changes to bring down some right. of those courts, some of those legal costs. We're going to have a system very similar to Alberta's on April 1st this year. Uh, right. But we're going to be paying, paying a very different amount, much, much more than they pay in Alberta, and that doesn't make sense. And what's the difference? Alberta, you can shop around for your auto insurance needs. Here in BC, you can't. Okay, so um, this advice... Um, could possibly um, be taken by the BC Liberals. Already, um, the leader of the party, Wilkinson, has been making some comments about ICBC that aren't entirely endearing to ICBC, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I think he sort of reflects the mood most British Columbians have of, of their crown insurer. I think he's equated it to a 1973 uh, Pinto, Pinto, which actually had a reputation for exploding, much like we've now seen yes. our crown insurer. Um, and he's su suggested that we need a new car. Not totally sure what that means, but um, he's certainly more and more open to seeing you know, competition as a potential solution here. Right, but you would think that the current government, having invested in these reforms, would probably be in a mood to, to watch how they take effect and maybe yeah, add to them. The current government has said you know, they're not interested in looking outside of ICBC for solutions. Right. Um, that's that's their perspective. We would simply disagree and say that you need to look at all the solutions. You need to look at best practices from across the country. You need to see how others are doing it, and the way others are doing it uh, is by letting other companies, other Canadian companies, in uh, and and bring that competitive incentive to the marketplace. If we were to take your advice and bring in competition, and I think over time do away with ICBC in in that circumstance, wouldn't we be losing something? Having a, an insurer that at least sort of is answerable to the people, that is at least supposed to be out 
uh, out for our interests at the same time as providing that insurance? Wouldn't we be losing something there? We might be losing just an ever-increasing insurance bill. Uh, but look, you know, in other provinces, insurance is extremely heavily regulated, and rightly so. Right? And so, you know, there's minimum requirements in terms of the product you have to be purchasing. Government can still set the rates. So in Alberta, they can, they can dictate what rate increase or decrease is allowed to come forward. Uh, so government still has a lot of control over auto insurance. They don't have to simply be offering it, right? It's similar to the banking sector and others, where government is still able to dictate the rules, uh, the rules insurers operate under uh, and the price they're charging. Uh, they just don't have to be the ones that ultimately provide the product. And that's, again, where you can see those efficiencies. If we could, if we could bring in another company to deliver this, the same product, more affordably, uh, what's the risk in doing so? Right. Be a big change, though. It would absolutely be a big change, um, but an important change and something that could really start to address some of the affordability challenge we see in this marketplace. You know, certainly uh, British Columbia is more and more seeing just cost pressures in just about every area. This is one area where, you know, there's a solution. It's just waiting to be picked up, and, and all it takes is uh, the, the political will to do so. Well, terrific. Thanks for sharing that with us. Aaron Sutherland, Thanks appreciate so much for that. Today. And thank you for watching Kelowna Now.